Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we have a tour of a virtual railroad, the Milwaukee Road Beer Line to be more exact. This railroad is totally uncompressed, made one to one to drawings of the actual railroad and depicts the Milwaukee Road Beer Line, which is a branch line of the Milwaukee Railroad. And this is a virtual model made entirely by enthusiastic fans, which I will give all the credits to at the end of the video. So let's have a look. Let's see what all the different tracks are on the turnouts, what's happening in this beautiful layout, and what we can learn when we make our own layout designs. So let's roll that intro, pop a beer, and let's get started. This is what we are going to be talking about today. This is the branch off of the Milwaukee Railroad. Train comes in all the way from the north and the top of the screen there. And this is a stub end industry area. I don't know if that's the correct term, but that's what we're going to call it. So that means here, right in the middle of the screen is the end of the line. And I think that will be a very appropriate place to start as well. Let me just get orientated so we can see the entire layout for more or less this view. So here we go. This is the Blatt's Beer Distributor. So beer was not manufactured here. This is just distributor. It would come in from the brewery on the railroad in these reefers and then be distributed throughout the city uh, and good region of Milwaukee. So what you see here counting in from the bottom, the first two tracks, uh, that one there in the middle and that one there are uh, team tracks on the right. So this is for uh, the, the local industries on the street, but also for the uh, different industries in the building on the right, because it's not only the Blatt's distributor, there's also some other um, shops down below. And then the north two or three tracks are for the distributor. You see the reefers park there. And note the most north track is also connected to a freight house on the left. So I said this model is created from actual map, so there's no compression uh, whatsoever. It's all one on one. They took the map and they traced the uh, railroad tracks over it. So that gives us a great sense of scale. And, and as you see, it's okay, it's big, but it's not that big. It's still model modelable. We can still do this at home in some way, uh, shape, or form. So here in the middle of the screen, you see the Babst card. Trucks will come in all the way from the other side of the river where the brewery is and offload here into reefers where the beer would be distributed throughout the country. So the bottom one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tracks you see, they just all end up here in a, a yard, nothing too special there. So just north of the yard, you see a, a spare track where the locomotive is parked and there's two gondolas. And then we have a few extra tracks. In the middle of the screen, we have a, another spare track that just seems to, to end with a gondola parked on it. And then one, two, three, four, four tracks. The bottom two are probably just to do runarounds to, to spot some extra cars when needed. And then the north two ones, I guess, are more for the uh, in and outbound uh, traffic because that distributor at the end of the branch is actually quite big. So then we get an amazing scene with the street. I want to talk about that for a minute. So you see one, two, three tracks that are all crossing the street to reach the other side of the road. And the one track in the middle actually crosses again, crosses the road again to join up with the branch line. That's a scene we can easily uh, model in our own railroads. And then there's another track here that splits off and goes to the north. Well, the first track here on the north you see are uh, three tracks and a fourth passing one just to offload, to offload the grain and perhaps the hops for the brewery. So let's have a look at the Slitz Brewery and all this trackage and see what we can, can learn and, and derive from that. We're just going to start on this end right here, because this is, I think, more or less where the, the fun begins. So on the right hand side, side we see uh, three tracks. These we'll call it the branch line. And the most right one, I believe, is where they would spot the empty reefers, as you see right here, one, two, three. Then we have th the three tracks. Then we have a small yard in the middle where the empty reefers are parked. Then we have uh, one track that goes uh, around all of this. That's right here. We'll come back to that. And then on the left is a more modern looking yard, where I think the more modern section of the Slits uh, brewery and, and bottling plant uh, were built later on. Let's look at the right hand side first. Let's just zoom over there a bit. a bit. The empty reefers were parked on the right, and then they would come up this track, the northern track, and then go to the ice housing where they would be pre ice. Then they would be loaded, loaded with bottles and or kegs. And I believe they would actually go back to the icing uh, and then off to their journey. Looking at the track arrangement, it is a bit of a mess to be honest. It looks like all the cars. Uh, only pass the icing house once. 
So I don't know if they're pre-iced and then loaded with, with kegs and bottles or they're first loaded and then iced afterwards. But it seems to be uh, just how the arrangement is that you, you would only go through the icing once. Because the bottom tracks, they, they are actually the bottom three tracks. They're all neatly lined up to depart on the most uh, bottom fourth track. And the north platform and the most uh, left platform are, are both very neatly lined up to, to enter this area on the second track and or to pass the uh, ho ice housing as well. So if you do know how this should work or if you have a theory about this, please let me know when we can discuss it because it is a very nice section to model and something you can model easily on your own layout. Going uh, back in this direction, as said, all the empty reefers for this area we just discussed will be parked here on the left. You see a lot of them uh, there already. And then this little yard in the middle is as well for empty reefers waiting to be loaded. And from this small yard, let me zoom in a little bit here where the engine is, you can very conveniently head into the north direction. Then exactly where this train is here, do a uh, switch back and then go down this line and only behold, you enter this part of the layout. So I have been really scratching my head where all these cars would be iced because there's no more icing on this section of the layout other than the one we, we saw a minute ago, but it's not convenient at all to go from this end to that end. And it's a very small icing platform for I think three or four, four cars. So that's not it. And this area normally I believe is covered. This is all located inside a shed. So my theory is, but correct me if I'm wrong, please do, is that in this shed will be an automated icing system as well where with the chutes you can easily ice all the cars that are being loaded here in the bottling plant. I could be wrong, I don't know, but that's my theory. So again, this is an, an interesting bit to, to model, very characteristic. I don't know how exciting it is to switch this, it's, it's very uh, static and it seems like a very straightforward job, so it might not be the most interesting in terms of operations. Let's see, as you see, we're making some, some good speed here. We're already halfway through this layout. So a few more tracks just before we depart from here. Uh, here we see the tankers. These are, I, I don't know, tankers brewery, I guess for syrup or corn syrup, something like that. And then this one track that's going here in the middle, crossing the street. I believe this was actually uh, not there and the, the creator put that in there. Here's another small uh, offloading facility. Don't know what they do uh, in there. Perhaps the, the hops. And the two tracks here obviously go to a grain elevator, so I guess this is for the offloading of the grain or the brewery. So that was actually uh, not that difficult. It looks quite complex, but if you just dissect all the tracks one by one and just think what could they do, what could their purpose be, then you will find out eventually. So I just want to pay a little bit of attention here. So let me zoom in and get to the uh, ground level. And you see these tracks here, this small yard. This is in the middle of a one line that goes around it down below. The small yard is elevated, which doesn't look pro tip at all, but it, it is. This is the uh, the one on one map with, with the heights in it. And then here you see another line to the left of the yard going around it. So let me look at this section a little bit more and just go over here because there's some, some strange and interesting stuff happening for us to, to model. I'm just going to go all the way here and let's look at the height again. So we have the train that's coming towards us, I would consider that to be uh, the main branch line. And then the train that's ducking uh, down below, this could be a, and also a run around of the branch line. I don't know how they run this, but you see there's quite a lot of elevation. And the train that's driving away from us is ducking down. And then here it could actually uh, duck up again to the yard. So then you would go down and up. Yeah, here you can see it clearly. Comes down from the right and then this train heads back down but there's also a track just right here that goes up to the yard so this could be an interesting section to model as well i don't know on your railroad if you want to get these types of height differences in there so you might have some, some traction problems if you compress the scene a bit um, but it's definitely very characteristic for for this area so let's go back to the other side of the line this run around down below i think it's also called the the roller coaster or the racetrack, uh, it goes around the yard here as such, then crosses the road and then joins the, the branch line again. And then here we have one split off, I think it's to, what was it? A hide a leather tanning uh, building, so that's an industry. Here at the bottom we have a, a team track, that's another industry. 
how are we going to get there? Let me just zoom out a bit and then refocus. You see the tannery in the middle of the screen with the two box, box cars. And then in the middle of the screen, you see the a team track. And then there's this track that runs on the, the street right here. And then here there is a, a crossover where you go from this industry uh, commerce road back to the branch line. And again, the, the, the three tracks on the left, I think the most left one is, is still for storage of, of cars and reefers. And then we get two tracks that are the, uh, the branch line with various uh, crossover areas and sections. So let me zoom in a bit here down below. We have more trackage. We have on the right, we have this massive, massive coaling facility that would uh, receive coal from, from barges from, from the river. And then just left of this little dirt road, you see there's a track that leads to, to more industries. And just left of that, you see there's an old uh, abandoned track that used to go up uh, back to the branch as well. So what are we seeing? If we go from right to left again, we have the coal track, and then we have two train tracks. Then we have a one track that's leading around to more industries. We have one, two, three, possibly yeah, three tracks which uh, create a small yard. Another track going to more industries, one to the main branch lines, and then some more tracks for some, some classification and then some, some storage. I was told that this area right here is more or less the staging for the branch line. So cars will come off on the Marquee Railroad and be uh, staged here and then classified to go to the different industries uh, or to go back onto the, uh, the main line itself. So if we just move forward from here, We'll just do these industries first because they just look so neat. We have from the bottom to the north, we have a scrapyard. And if you look at the track, track plan, it's very straightforward. There's actually no runaround in this entire area. So all the runaround action would have to be would have to be done from that staging yard that we just saw. Then we have a lot of uh, storage tracks and some team tracks, uh, logs and uh, coal here, and some, some more industrial uh, storage facility. This is a coal uh, washing plant, so coal will be washed to create some added value there. And then here is where the layout stops and it gets a bit murky. Uh, I just don't know. I think these tracks actually continue to the north, but I'm not sure. And this one continues, the most left track continues as well, but I'm just not sure. So this is where the, the layout, I guess, if this is your model layout, would go into staging and you would just pop up with your trains as they do little engine terminal here for the branch line. So again, this is a branch line, so they probably have their own authority and as you see their own track power for this whole uh, layout. So that is, is very fun to, to model. So now let's look at some different scenes. I'm thinking to do a, a very compressed version of this layout with something that can fit in your own spare bedroom. Let's see what scenes and different areas we might take with us to, to include in, in that layout design. So first off, this whole section here on the right, it's, it's a great scene. You got this big wide road and all these tracks uh, crossing it, but it's a bit no man's land, isn't it? You got this coal wash plant that just ends over there. And then you got this the team tracks and the scrap yard that just ends on to the right over there. I think this is something that will really nicely fit in the corner or at the end of, of a layout. And it's quite easily to compress this. I mean, the scrap yard could be uh, one or two tracks instead of four. And the team tracks in the middle, you could even leave that out or just include one or two. In the coal washing facility, uh, you, you would have to compress that significantly. Another very nice uh, area to model is this street uh, area where you got the coal and the river on one side and then a track on both sides of the road. So if we just go through it here, there's different aspects of this scene. So here would be a section you can model as well. And we have the elevated track on the right, which is something you, you quite quickly have in a model railroad. And then, you have, and then you lower the track and you have the two tracks on different sides of the road. And then here we have several scenes all tied into one. You have the, the bridge, you can model that. Uh, you still have the street running with the track down below. And a little bit of elephant in the room are the, these tracks here in the middle that uh, change elevation. Don't really know how you would model that. And I also don't really know how much modeling pleasure you'll and operating pleasure you'll get out of, of modeling this. Um, but then again, it is a, a key feature. So it could be interesting perhaps to, to model part of it. You don't have to do this whole up and down and left and right and switchbacks. Uh, so what part would be really interesting and characteristic, characteristic to model? 
I think this would be uh, the characteristic uh, section to model this this little yard that's raised onto a platform. This is something that that's doable uh, to model, and you will need this if you're going to operate uh, the big uh, plant as well. You need a place to store your your reefers, so this could be a great section to model. How would I model this? How would I compress this? Depending on the space, I'll probably have two tracks on the left and then one that goes around the yard uh, on the left side and one that goes around the yard on the right side and then they have this pool, three or four track yard. So then you would have one, two, three, four tracks excluding the yard, eight including the yard. So yeah, this would take up quite a, quite the width, a good 60 centimeters or something like that, just on the trackage. Okay, turning around, well, this uh, this bottling facility is it's obviously something you, you could model. Uh, it does take a lot of space, but it's very easy to compress. Instead of uh, eight, what is it, seven tracks, you can just have two or three. I think that will give a, a very good representation of, of what's going on. And again, I didn't, don't really know the history, but it could be that in your time uh, frame, that bottling plant on the left is not even there. So then it's, it's a bit more easy, you just... Uh, you can go for the bottling plant on the right. So we already discussed this trackboard mess. Let me see if I can get a nice angle. So here we go. That is a nice angle. And this really shows, uh, I think, what you really, what's nice to model. You got this wiggly track. It's all over the place. Uh, again, we don't really know yet what the purpose is of all this track and why it's so wiggly, but it is a nice feature to model. Then you have these big structures uh, up above that go from uh, one building to the other building so they go over the track that's always something very nice to model as well but your train goes un underneath uh, something so this is an interesting section to model how would i model it i would just copy the track plan just like this maybe try to shorten it here and there where possible uh, maybe by making that road a little bit less, less wide and then obviously here these four tracks you can trim those in a bit as well so on the hunt for more scenes, this is a very nice industrial looking section. You have tracks going absolutely everywhere. Got tracks crossing left to right from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. You got tracks on the right side of the road, left side of the road, crossing the road. Road goes from left to right, goes from the bottom to the left to right, bottom to north. There's so much happening here. It's a, it's a five road intersection and, and God knows how many tracks. How would you do it? How would you compress it? It's not going to be that easy, but it, but you want to have the essence. So the essence is chaos. So you want these five roads coming in from all angles, and then you want uh, the, the trackage more or less how it is as well. So if you would model this, then I think you, you have to model this street here, or a little bit of it as well. And this is also a scene I really like, and it's something I've never done before, but I really wanted to one of my next layouts. It is a road with all this street running, uh, slash uh, track crossing the road. I think that would be just absolutely amazing. And fine tune the bell on your little uh, tsunami or ESU uh, decoders because you're going to hear that bell a lot. So the next elephant in the room is this PAPS loading facility. You probably want to model this. But again, it's easy to scale down. To put it, make like three tracks or four if you have the space or even two or one. Or you can even make it as a staging. Just make one track that so-called goes, goes to this uh, yard and it just disappears behind some buildings. Easy to do, it's a city scene, make a row of buildings, uh, the reefers go in behind there, and, and that's uh, that. But if you look at a scene as a whole, um, this yard doesn't disappear anywhere. It's, in fact, it's in the middle of this massive pavement area. We got the street on the left with the tram or trolley going by. And on the right, you got the street, we already discussed that. And then you just got a whole barrage of tracks. At this widest point, what, what do we have? 14 tracks depending on how you count it. So that is a scene in itself. Um, this is a stub end yard, so that's good news. That means you can make it at the end of your layout or perhaps in a corner uh, and get those 14 or let's say 10 or eight tracks uh, on your layout. And then at the end, uh, the blats. Yeah, what to say after this entire layout, this just looks like a very empty spaced out area, doesn't it? Not that much going on. I mean, again, if we compress it, there's no need for too much compression. I would leave the bottom two tracks because it has the team track with the little uh, roof over it. And then I would leave the north two tracks because it has this uh, switch back on it here in the middle of the screen. And you could take out the middle track. And then this Blatz building you can, you can do as a, as a flat against the wall uh, to save some area there. And you got the river on one side, the road on the other side with the tram. That would just look absolutely amazing. So guys, just some extra information. This 
uh, virtual layout is made with a software called Rolling Line. This is actually a game. Um, it is made for VR glasses. So I actually have it, I bought it uh, a long time before this layout was, uh, was made, but it's just so frustrating to use. <laughs> and that coming from someone who is, is used to, to, to working with computers, this is so frustrating. I just bailed on it. I couldn't use it. It's a shame. You can make amazing stuff as you see, but uh, I just couldn't work with it. So uh, extra kudos and, 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 and good for those guys who made this. Thank you very much. I'll mention all your names in the credits. Let me just do one more uh, flyover of the track plan. So if you want to pause your video somewhere to please feel free to do that. If you want to have a closer look. And again, I'm so intrigued by this branch line. I think I will try to design a small layout uh, based on this to keep the, the operational um, essence that is there, but to trim it down a bit from this, I don't know, 100 feet layout to something that will, will fit uh, in our basement. Now, if you were looking at this and you're thinking, wow, I want a layout like this, I don't really know where to start or how to capture the essence of this uh, brewery line, please feel free to contact me. I do offer consultancy services when it comes to layout design, track planning, or, or just uh, to change or upgrade or improve an existing design. So please uh, do feel free uh, to contact me. My email address is in the about section of my YouTube channel, or you can contact me via my uh, Patreon website and we can get in touch and come to a custom offer that would really help you with your needs and what you want and that suits your budget as well. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.